Assalam o Alaikum. Dear learners, I hope you are safe and fine. This video is the last one in the series of flow measurement transducers. In the very first video of this series, I said that flow measurement can be done using two broad categories of instruments. The first type measures directly the mass flow rate of the solids in powdered or grinded form, liquids or gases. Whereas the second type called the volume flow rate sensing is used for liquids and gases or slurries only. In the previous video, I discussed obstruction type flow meters that are used for volume flow rate sensing. Whereas in this video, I'm going to discuss other types of volume flow rate sensors that are not producing any kind of obstruction or even if they are producing any obstruction, they are not measuring the pressure differential created by that obstruction to figure out the volume flow rate. So getting right to the point, the first flow rate sensor that I am going to discuss is commonly known as rotameter. Basically, it is a variable area flow meter which is suitable for measuring flow rate of fluids that are moving against the gravity in vertical pipes. Depending on the flow of the fluid and the pressure differential created on both sides of the float shown over here, the float will be lifted. When there is no flow, the float will settle down, hence blocking the path of the fluid completely. Depending on the volume flow rate, the float will rise up and will settle at a point where the pressure created by the fluid on one side of the float equals the pressure head present on the other side of the float. The conical shape of the pipe carrying this float allows higher pressure to develop on the top of the float as the float rises and hence a point will come when the pressure at the top will balance the pressure at the bottom and at that point the position of the float is calibrated to show the volume flow rate. These instruments are suitable for visual indication of the flow whereas advanced and expensive versions can measure the displacement of the float to figure out the volume flow rate as well. The next volume flow rate sensor that I am going to discuss is called turbine meter. It got its name from its similarity with how a turbine works. If you have any idea that how electricity is generated in a turbine based powerhouse, you can easily see that what is going to happen over here. A wheel having blades on it is mounted on a pipe placed inside the flowing carrying channel. The flow of the fluid will interact with the blades of the turbine and hence will cause it to rotate. An external magnetic proximity sensor is installed just outside the channel so that when the ferromagnetic blades rotate, they move past this magnetic proximity sensor. The proximity sensor will sense the presence of blade and hence will generate a pulse. As the wheel rotates, the blades will rotate and move past this proximity sensor. Hence, we are going to receive pulses at the output of this proximity sensor. Counting these pulses will give us the rate of rotation of the wheel, which in turn is directly proportional to the volume flow rate of the fluid flowing in the channel. Methods other than magnetic proximity sensors can also be employed to sense the rotation of the wheel. For example, some forms of turbine meters utilizes fiber optics to sense the light reflected by the turbine blades, hence generating an output whenever reflection is received. The downsides of the turbine meters include the small amount of permanent pressure drop that they induce into the system along with the turbine blades being prone to corrosion and wearing because of the fluid rubbing against them. Furthermore, the accuracy of turbine meters drop considerably if it has been calibrated for a pure liquid and is being used to measure the volume flow rate of liquids that contain another insoluble liquid in them. For example, water particles present in oil. Turbine meters find most of their applications in oil and petrochemical industries. The next volume flow rate sensor is known as electromagnetic flow meter, which is a non-invasive and almost contactless transducer. The electromagnetic flow meter can measure the flow rate of electrically conductive fluids only because the working principle includes generation of magnetic field through which the fluid flow. 
it is exactly equal to a conductor wire moving inside a magnetic field. Whenever this happens, a voltage is induced into the conductive wire. Therefore, if the conductive fluid is flowing past an orthogonal magnetic field, then voltage will be induced in it according to the Faraday's law given by this equation. As the fluid used over here is conductive, the inside of the pipe carrying this fluid is coated with special insulation materials and the electrodes are inserted into the pipe such that they are just brushing the fluid present inside the pipe. The equation shown over here states that the EMF E is induced in the fluid moving with a velocity V in a length L of the magnetic field B. Using this equation, we can figure out the velocity of the fluid and by multiplying this velocity with the cross-sectional area of the pipe, we can calculate the volume flow rate. This method is almost contactless method and I am using the word almost over here because only the electrodes are brushing with the fluid moving inside the pipe and there is no other contact of the fluid or obstruction to the fluid. Therefore, there will not be any pressure loss because of the measurement taken by magnetic flow meters. The next flow rate sensor is relatively a new one in the lot. It is called vortex shedding flow meter and it creates an obstruction in the flow of the fluid using an unstreamlined object called a bluff body. The unstreamlined structure of the object causes the fluid flowing past it rub against the body and slow down. As the layers near the bluff body slows down, they break from the layers which are away from the bluff body and hence the broken layers curl up and create vortices downstream. Frequency of these vortices with which they are being generated is directly proportional to the flow rate. Various kinds of sensors can be used to detect the vortices that are being created. In the shown schematic, ultrasonic transmitter and receiver pair is used in a through beam ultrasonic sensor form to detect the vortices. The positives of this technique includes wide measurement range, low power consumption, and absence of moving parts. One of the major drawbacks or issues associated with this kind of flow meter is that if there is any kind of obstruction in the flow upstream, it will cause large number of vortices to be generated. In other words, if the fluid flow is not streamlined or laminar, then the number of vortices generated will be much greater. Therefore, it is recommended to have at least 50 pipe diameters length of straight pipe before the bluff body. This much length of straight pipe is recommended for achieving a smooth laminar flow of the fluid. Lastly, the flow of the fluid inside the pipe can cause the pipe to vibrate. These vibrations are detrimental to the whole process as more number of vortices will be generated because of the vibration of the pipe. This issue is quite effectively catered by the advanced kind of vortex shedding flow meters which perform active vibration cancelling while detecting the frequency of the vortices. The last type of flow meters that I am going to discuss are known as ultrasonic flow meters. These flow meters are truly non-invasive and can be easily clamped on the pipe which is carrying the fluid. The non-invasive form allows these flow meters to measure the flow rate of corrosive fluids and slurries as well. Furthermore, such kind of flow meters are used in FMCG companies where the flow of juices and other such liquids is to be measured. Moreover, the allowance to clamp these flow meters to the fluid carrying pipes make them easy to install and safe no matter what kind of fluid is flowing in the pipes. Basically, ultrasonic flow meters come in two different forms. One is called Doppler shift ultrasonic flow meter, whereas the other one is called transit time ultrasonic flow meter. In the Doppler shift ultrasonic flow meter, ultrasonic waves are transmitted by the transmitter and they are reflected by the air bubbles or any other particles present in the flowing fluid. The reflections are detected by the ultrasonic detector. As that reflection was created from a moving particle, the reflected wave will experience a Doppler shift in its frequency. 
Just like how a speed sensor used by traffic police works, Doppler shift ultrasonic flow meters work in the same way. The Doppler shift in frequency is directly proportional to the speed of the moving particle and hence speed of the fluid in the pipe. Multiplying the speed of the fluid with the cross-sectional area of the pipe will give us the volume flow rate. The reflections received by the ultrasonic detector and the overall strength of the reflection is dependent on a number of factors. For example, the flow profile, uniformity and internal structure of the pipe, the number, size and spatial distribution of the particles present in the fluid that are creating the reflections and many other things. Hence, careful calibration is required when you want to use these kind of flow meters. The other type of ultrasonic flow meters called the transit time flow meters are perfect for measuring the flow rate of clean, smooth flowing fluids. In this case, two ultrasonic transceiver pairs are used. The transmitter in both pairs transmit the ultrasonic waves at an angle through the fluid moving in the pipe, whereas the receiver receives the ultrasonic wave transmitted by the transmitter of the other transceiver pair. The schematic shown over here shows that how transceivers are placed. The ultrasonic wave that is traveling downstream will take less time to travel from the transmitter to the receiver as compared to the ultrasonic wave traveling upstream. This time difference is directly proportional to the flow rate of the fluid. Multiplying the flow rate of the cross-sectional area of the pipe will give us the volume flow rate of the fluid which is moving through the pipe. With this, I would like to end the lecture and hope that you have understood the working principles of various kind of flow meters that I have discussed in these videos. Thank you and take care.